بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Continuing in volume 2 of Riyad al-Saliheen, book number 17, the book of prohibited action. Chapter 296, prohibition of wearing false hair, tattooing, and filing of teeth. Narrated Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that Allah has cursed those women who practice ta tattooing and those women who have themselves tattooed and those women who get their hair removed from their eyebrows and faces, except the beard and the mustache, and those who make artificial <coughs> spaces between their teeth for beauty, whereby they change Allah's creation. A woman started to argue with him saying, what is all this? He replied, why should I not curse those whom Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed and who are cursed in Allah's book. Allah the Exalted has said in his book, in Surah number 59, verse number 7, of which the meaning is, and whatsoever the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you, take it. And whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it. As Bukhari and Muslim. We learn from this hadith that any effort to bring about a change in one's natural appearance is unlawful. Al washim tattoo in tattooing al washir slimming the teeth at tafalluk to create gap between the teeth and nams the plucking of eyelashes etc come in the category of forbidden and unlawful fashion. It should be mentioned here that the use of henna is permissible because it does not bring about any such change which is forbidden. The use of henna is permissible subject to the condition that women should not make its display before any man who is not a mahram. A mahram is a person with whom it is not lawful to contract marriage. Chapter 297, Prohibition of Plucking Gray Hairs. Narrated Amr bin Shu'ayb on the authority of his father and grandfather that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not pluck out gray hair, for they are the Muslims' light on the day of resurrection. Abi Dawood, Atimidhi, and Nasai. Plucking of gray hair, usually a sign of old age, should be avoided because besides the benefit which one gets from them in the afterlife, they are a means of respect in this world. Narrated Aisha radiallahu anha that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who does something contrary to our way, i.e. Islam, will have it rejected. Muslim. Contrary to our way means such acts which have neither been allowed or justified nor can be justified by any principle of Sharia. Thus this hadith makes it abundantly clear that all heresies and violation of Sharia will not be accepted by Allah. Every Muslim is required to be faithful followers of divine orders rather than a heretic and a rebel. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. I have a question. Um, Allah, Allah, Allah. This was a question that um, a brother asked me. I was confused about it. It's about Salah. Um, I'm really confused about this question. Um, I know if you miss a salat, if you miss a congregation of salat, um, I know I see some brothers when they miss the salat, they come in with other brothers and they try to make up for that salat. Now, I was told, um, and I remember hearing, I, I just want to know if I'm right, is it permissible for two brothers to make salat together if they, if they miss the congregation of salat? Okay. Is that still possible? بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. As we understand our religion according to the book of Allah and the authentic sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, the manner of understanding and practice of the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them. And with the practice of the Sahaba, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. If they reach the mosque, and that the prayer is over, they will pray individually. 
we didn't know that the Sahaba, if they miss their prayer with the Imam, that they will congregate together. So we should follow the Sahaba in their practice because they understand the Sunnah better than anybody else that who came after them. And that the Prophet وسلم, had made a testimony for the Sahaba. And he, ad- he advised us to follow their tradition and their practice. So this is the practice of the Sahaba. Otherwise, if there is a second and third congregation can be done, with no need for the Prophet وسلم, that he had almost to go to burn the houses of those people who did not come to Salatul Jama'ah. So if it's permissible to make a second Jama'ah and third Jama'ah, <clears throat> So there is no need for the Prophet Sallallahu to make this a threat against those people who is late because they have opportunity to get together and make a second or a third Jama'ah. So this is the practice of the Sahaba. And this is the best example for us after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah knows best. I want to ask about the tattoos. Uh, what if you put the tattoos on before you become a Muslim and then you realize that it's Haram? Do you try to take it off or just leave it as it is? If it's not too much harm for you to take the tattoo after you get to know that it's Haram, so you should do it. But if it's going to be costly and harmful for you, you can leave it alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving, especially for things that the people did it before Islam or unknowingly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.